I bet each one of you have a miracle happen to you with natural medicine. It's like God sent his angels and bless it. And we put that in our body and it really works. Um, so, did you know that in the Ten Commandments, you can find that God heal or not your genes? In the first commandment, it says that God will bless for a thousand generations the ones that love him. And he will curse for three or four. Wow, God is amazing, right? So let's bring that to us. How that works. Let's say that my parents and my grandparents, great grandparents were horrible people. It's God cursing three, four generations. So I'm not even going to try. I'm cursed, right? No. The minute I say, Lord, I love you and I, I, I want to follow you. I want to hear your voice. It starts a new person. The new person will do things different, will talk different, will eat different, will sleep different, will rest different, will dress different. Can you see where we are going to the steps of healing? How God uses the minute that you accept Christ, a new person starts. And God does not heal you for you to be the same. There is a transformation. A new person. You will do things different. The true healing. How can you recognize the true healing? healing. Satan can do miracles. He can. Is it true miracle? Can you see a transformation in the habits and how the person acts? Can you see that? No. The world offers a beautiful health message. Oh my goodness. Have you, have you watched Forks Over Knives documentary? Or uh, what is the new one? Uh, the Game Changer? Which one? Dr. Foreman. Exercise. It's beautiful. The way they eat is even better than the way we eat. It doesn't have any processed food, no fat. Forks over knives is amazing. What is missing? <laughs> that and. <laughs> The spiritual is missing Jesus and taste. I agree with you. <laughs> it, it does. It, it, the person is, uh, yeah, you will see a person that has diabetes it starts on the plant based, follow forks over knives, 10 days, 10 days. The body of the person is different. It's starting the healing process. The person will never have, as long as it follows, will never have diabetes anymore. But did the genetics of that person change like the law of God change you? No, because God wants to change everything for a new creature to be born. A new creature that he can write his ways in the heart and in the minds. So we'll be imprinted. And for your next generation, because you changed, they see that change in you and they change you. Even that you messed up really bad your kids. That's our job. You know, our parents messed us up and we messed up the next ones. But when 
Jesus transform us, do you believe he can redo that? Yes, he can. It doesn't matter how bad you messed up. Because we do. We are humans. And we need to be patient with our parents too. Look at the way they grow up. The conditions they grew up, the wars that they endured, the famine they went through. It gets to the point where they have to be horrible. Can God transform that? Yes, he can. Do you believe it? Do you love God? So the minute you love God, he cures a thousand of your descendants. Amazing, huh? He's healing your seed because you are a new creature. And once we start doing that, Lord, I do love you, you start following the commandments, and then later on in life, you learn about, oh, God has a way of healing. You know, the, the eight remedies. So what, what is, what can we do to be healthy and to get that transformation to the point where even our genes can be transformed, our disease can be transformed? How can we get there? Remember when the Apostle Paul says that <clears throat> when you are a newborn, you eat newborn food. Baby steps. And because God wants to upgrade you, he's never done with you. He will always work on something else. He will always update you in something else. Okay, this part is done. Now, next, completed. It's next. What, what is next? It gets to a point where it bother us. It, it's like, or we get sick, or we say, ah, I, I know we're, I, I know I'm getting old, I, I'm gonna go downhill, but it gets to the point that you know that it takes something from you to start doing it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> it, it, it takes a awakening or a desire for for better or for my, the mind to work better and it, it's something that bothers you and you're like oh, really lord the health message when i was 17 18 um, i knew that people would come to my church to talk about the health message i would go to another church because they would be telling me what to eat and what to do or not to do. Nobody tells me what I will. I want to eat whatever I want. <laughs> it, it was bothersome. Oh, thank you. But it got to a point where it was bothering me so much that I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. I'll have to try. Actually, it was kind of my husband. He, he was going through some problems, health problems, and uh, there was nothing else to be done. So he was put in these um, plenty of vegetables diet. Uh, everything was just vegetables, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I, I didn't like it, so I would just boil the poor thing. So I would be eating, you know, my, I was in love with the American food, my, my IHOP, my pizza or whatever, and he would be looking at this boiled broccoli. And he was like, can we all eat the same thing? <laughs> and I said, I'm not sick. <laughs> you are sick, you eat it. <laughs> and he said, mm. he got me. Are you gonna wait to be sick? What are we doing? We know, we, we have the message. We know where we are weak. I don't need to tell you, you know. And that bothered me a lot. And I start going to church. 
And um, there was a doctor there. The first week that I decided, okay, uh, I'm going to go to church. It was a doctor, a, a Korean doctor that grew up in Brazil. And uh, he had these amazing ways of teaching medicine. I was taught in college that there is a pill for each problem you have. And you will take that till you die. You die. No hope, right? Isn't that horrible? But we don't pay attention to this. And uh, the, this doctor was just saying amazing things happen to you when you follow the simple things God tell you to do. And uh, he had all these people coming and telling, yeah, I had high blood pressure. I I don't want any more. I said, wow, this is beautiful. I want this kind of medicine. And I went to talk to him, and he was so calm. And he said, oh, you want to you wanna talk like this? And, and, and you want to teach people? Hmm, that's good. Very good. Read the Bible. <laughs> He's right. Do you want healing? We go to the source. And then the Lord will press for what else? What's next? Once you get to the point that the health message is bugging you so much, you have two options. Get angry and say, no, I'm not going to do it. And you have the option of surrender and say, okay, Lord, you, you win. <laughs> That's something I have to do. You know, I have a pain here or there. And you say that your healing is like this, and I trust you, I believe you, so help me. Once I met that doctor, Dr. Jia Yun, um, he set me like in a whole reading. And he said, you will read the Bible, and he steps to Christ, and prophets and kings, and kings and... Uh, um, Patriarch, pat patriarchs and prophets, prophets and kings, and then the desire of ages, and then apostles, and then you go through the whole thing when you are tired, you go back because you learn new things. And everything you learn there, you practice. Oh. Okay. So I started, and I started alone. Um, I didn't pray, I didn't ask God to help me. And I got angry, really angry, because when you are doing something against your will, it makes you angry. That's why Jesus would go to the person and say, do you want to be healed? You need to want it. And if you don't want, you need to ask God to make you want or to help you want. So I got angry and I would go back and say, I've been good for one week. I can eat naughty stuff now. I eat all the fried food I want. And then I get sick. It, it, it was just horrible. And I said, you know, I'm finding that my worst enemy is me. That the things I want to eat, I can clearly see that is destroying my body and my thought. And it's just, it's not adding. The way of the world, it takes from you. The way of the Lord adds. The foods that are God's foods will add to your bones, will add to your brain, will add to your skin. The way of Destruction, the way of Satan is to take, to destroy, to kill. Everything God created for us to eat is to make you have life. Not just physical life. He wants you to have eternal life. Not a little bit, abundant life. Everything that God created is to heal. Everything that Satan transformed and processed and put it in a box, it's to take, to destroy, to kill. I know you can see that, 
but this will only start working in your life. You will only start doing it the minute you ask God to give you the will to do it. Once he gives you the will and the power to do it, then it's not going to be a problem anymore. Because go to sleep early, it's going to come easy. And it's not easy. But something happens when you pray. And one day you just click and say, okay, I'm going to do it. Something clicks and say, okay, I'm going to do exercise. Even if it's walk. Right. Start baby steps. Remember, newborn, eat newborn food. If you're starting, don't push too hard because the step will be too long and you're going to fall. Baby steps. So at home, what I started was taking off the sugar. And I love sugar. Sugar doesn't love me. <laughs> it's painful. And I would trade any lunch or dinner plate for dessert. <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> but when you ask God for the willpower to do it, he starts working on your taste buds. And if you don't even want to start on the sugar, I have a lot of friends that they started not taking anything, but adding. They start adding more fruits to their plate, more vegetables for their lunch and dinner. And it took not long, but their taste buds could not agree anymore with certain kind of things. It was just, ew, I like that? No, I don't like it anymore. Because I'm a new person. It's the whole new person starts and it's amazing. You remember when you were not from church that you used to love pork? Can you smell the smell of pork? What does that do to you? It's not good, right? It's not good. So you know the transformation started already. You know that God called you by your name. You know that. You know that you are part of his kingdom and that he will transform you if you ask. Remember the neighbor that would be knocking on the door asking, please give it to me, give it to me. When we ask for things of the spirit, God will give you abundantly. Is that for your growth or for your benefit, your own benefit? It's, it's for a spiritual benefit. It's for uh, your benefit with God. So do you think he'll tell you, no, I'm not, I'm not going to give you the willpower to do it? He will not do that. He will give it to you. And one day, you will do it. So um, how, how it works, the, the whole God's pharmacy? Um, can you move to next? I, should I? Uh, it's off. Okay. No. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, next slide. There. So, the whole base of the health message is God. The healing is God and come from God. It's, it's with God alone. He pronounced words and created everything. So the only way that we can be successful and uh, strong enough to say no to a cake and yes to a carrot <laughs> is with prayer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I, had a, I had a little girl. Uh, her mom brought her to one of the churches that I was going. And, um, and she had a, a tumor in her, in her 
brain. And it was not not malignant, it was benign, but it was growing too fast and it was pressing other parts of her, her head and it was painful. And um, her mom wanted me to talk to her. Um, she was old enough to understand, she was about 13, 14. So I, I told her about the whole thing. She said, I have no problem with eating more fruits, more vegetables, and um, I, I have no sugar. I don't have any problem, but I love chocolate chip cookies. And I will not stop eating them. Like at the end of my day, I want at least three. And I said, huh, well, no problem because I'm gonna give your mom a recipe for another cookie. And she's like, no way. It doesn't taste the same, you know that. I said, yeah, it doesn't. You know, it has um, banana instead of sugar. <laughs> it has oats and all kinds of stuff that kids are not very attracted to. And um, I said, well, okay, so I know it doesn't taste the same, but it's uh, at least similar and uh, if, if you don't want, do, do you want to pray about it? Let's pray and, and God will help, him, uh, will help you. And she's like, no, because if I ask him to help me, I will not eat the cookies anymore. And I don't want to give that to God. Mm -mm, I want to eat my cookies. <laughs> ah, bring that to your spiritual life. Where are the cookies that we are holding tight? And we don't want to give it to God because we like it. it, it you know, it, it tastes good. It, it could be a habit. It could be a vice. So many things. And I said, oh, wow, this girl is really smart. <laughs> and she can get away with a lot of things. What can I, what can I say? He said, well, the, the only thing that is left is ask God that even that she doesn't want for her to want it. And it happened. She got really horrible headaches and she could see that it was only after eating a lot of sugar from the cookies. And once she wanted, she asked God to help her not to want the cookies anymore because she would look at the cookies and she would see pain. It's just good for five seconds. And then it's not good anymore. And her tumor starts shrinking. Isn't that amazing? But can you see how the will works? Do you want to be healed? Do you want? God cannot push, he cannot force. You want to want. If you don't want to want, you ask him for want to want to want. How many wants you want to put there? And he will give it to you. The only way is when we pray and we set a meeting with him at a certain time of the day. And we say, Lord, please help me to practice the health message. Something that Dr. Jaya told me, he was like, the people you talk to, will only start to be healed once you practice what you say. That's painful. If they don't see that in you, it's not gonna happen. Our message was given to us 150 years ago. Our churches are a center of healing in town. I, I know you have your center there. That's beautiful. It's amazing. Because inside of the message is the whole plan of salvation. Like you can change your genes. You can change your generation by the first commandment. So the base of prayer, the base of the changing is little by little asking God for help and go through the Bible, devotional steps to Christ. And then you do all that. And then you go back and do it again. And every time you learn something different. Um, 
Next one. The next step <clears throat> is rest. And this one is hard, especially when we are all having fun and talking and uh, we don't want to waste time sleeping. But <laughs> it is a waste of time, right? We could be so productive. We could be doing so many things, but hmm, let me tell you. Uh, so it was revealed to Sister White that we should go to bed two hours before midnight. Those are the exact words she uses. So that is 10 o'clock, right? So science was able to prove that from 11 p.m. till 3 a.m., it happens the regeneration of the cells. If you are not sleeping, it's not gonna happen. So they go through a scan while you're sleeping and see it. this is right, this is right, this is wrong, oh, this is wrong. Okay, let's put another new, a new piece there. Regeneration of the cells from 11 to 3. If you're not sleeping, it's not going to happen. If your stomach is full of food, it's not going to happen. The stomach needs to be digested already. The food from dinner needs to be gone. What I've noticed that is a problem of our time right now because we are so busy is that we go throughout the day without food. And then at night, we do a mountain. <laughs> and uh, we eat and we fall asleep right there. And all that food stays in our stomach, creating fermentation. Fermentation is alcohol. Alcohol is poison to our liver. So we wake up with our mouth very bitter. It tastes horrible. The food didn't digest. You're not hungry. You're still burping from last night. And then digestion will start. You have horrible mood. You're sleepy and cranky. And then we stop at a place and buy a bucket of coffee because we have no energy, which will make us more anxious and more angry and acidic. And it's just, how do we break that? Um, there's a, an example from Sister White that she says that she did not like vegetables. And uh, she did not want to eat her vegetables if it didn't have a lot of cream and butter. And um, she even says that eating vegetables without cream and butter, it's like a... Um, um, I step back from the health law because it tastes horrible. <laughs> so she, was, she, she said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to eat the second plate if I eat this plate of vegetables first. So every time she would come to the kitchen to eat, she advised the person to do something like put the plate of vegetables in front of me. And she would look, hmm, no. Three days without food. Three days. By the end of those three days, the vegetables taste delicious. <laughs> so how can we break that cycle? We go to bed hungry, sleep, drink water, sleep. Next morning, you will be hungry. And you will not be cranky. You will have energy and you only know how bad you feel when you start to feel good. It happened to me. I, I didn't know. I was waiting to be sick to do something about it. So when I start changing little things here and there, I start seeing difference in me, difference in my kids, in my husband. And the time to go to bed was really important because the kids would be a lot better to manage, and I would be better to manage. You have more control of yourself if you had a good night of sleep. Can you control your anger if you're all, all, all night up? 
No. So sleep is very important for the regeneration of the genes, for um, our digestive system. And on Sabbath, we have the day of rest. That day of rest is not physical, it's the mind. We have a break on Sabbath. We don't have bills to pay. We talk about God. We don't have problems. We learn how to have strength from each other's experiences. And we go, oh, if, if they did it, I can do it too. Oh, God did that for them. I will pray. Oh, so-and-so needs prayer. Let's do it. And then you see the results and everything turned a lot better. So the day of rest is a psychological rest, is, is a spiritual rest, is our day of connection with God, is the day that your cells will be healed more than when you are sleeping at night for the whole week. Isn't it amazing? It's a blessing. It's a break for us. Next one. Water. There's a book that says that we are not sick, we are thirsty. And it's true. 90% of our blood is water. 90%. If we are not drinking water, what will circulate? A paste. A paste, cholesterol paste. All that fat that we eat that is not bio soluble or it's not water soluble will we stay inside of us and we need water 70 percent of our body is water 90 percent of our blood is water so we are always thirsty <laughs> we are taught in medical school that a person that is 40 years old or more the switch for thirst is turned off because we don't obey it. So we just receive the message of hunger. <sighs> so instead of drinking water, we eat. And it should be the other way. The first time that you think, oh, I'm hungry, uh, drink water first. How should we be drinking water? You start is slow. You don't need to start like six bottles a day. No, you can start slow. If you take one bottle a day, um, by the next week, try to do a bottle and a half. And then next week, two bottles. And you increase, and your body will tell you the amount that it's enough for you. So the water you should be taking 20 minutes before meals. So you wake up, you drink your water, 20 minutes after, you can eat. Then after you eat, you need to wait two hours and then you start drinking water. We need to give space and time for our stomach to digest the food and then we drink water. All the water that goes into our stomach needs to be diluted with saliva. Some people say, oh, I drink water and it makes me wanna throw up, like it gives me nausea is because it's not mixed with water. Chugging it down, it's, it's not gonna help with thirst. It needs to mix with saliva. Everything that goes into our stomach needs to be mixed with saliva, a lot of saliva. That's why we need to chew our food really well. Um, the amount of what? So um, the time to drink water, you know, 20 minutes and two hours after meals. Um, amount of water, you will start little by little, and um, maybe five bottles a day, four bottles a day, six bottles a day. It depends how intense you are working outside, how much water you are losing, and um, then you will slowly increment the water, and your body will let you know. Um, the, the bladder in the beginning gets really tight, and we need to go to the bathroom every five minutes. But then the bladder starts to get more expendable. And then you can hold a little bit more. So remember, the first week you drink more water, you go bathroom more. But then it gets better. The lymphatic system, we can activate 
our lymphatic system, that is the one that fights diseases, that is the barrier of diseases in our body, we can activate with cold water. So what you do, you take your shower, and then you put the water very hot, not in the head, just let the very hot water go, uh, uh, and then you put very cold, <laughs> and then it goes in the head, and then very hot and very cold. You do that like three times. Um, you can count to 10. Yeah, it's fast. It's fast. Uh, our skin is the biggest organ we have, and when our shower is warm or hot, our pores expand, open. And when we use cold water, it closes. So it's the biggest organ we have, and we go out our day with all the pores open. Like the first barrier against disease is open. We need to close it. It needs to be closed. So hot and cold, hot and cold. And it's great to activate our blood circulation. We have three main keys for a good health. One is circulation. So where you have good circulation, there's no disease. No disease can survive good circulation. Next one is good oxygenation. If you have a lot of oxygen, who carries the oxygen? So can you see why we need to have good circulation? Because that's how the oxygen goes around. And oxygen is life for us. God blew oxygen in our nostrils, right? He gave us the first breath. And that oxygen means, means life to every part of our body. The oxygen will kill all kinds of bacteria, virus, cannot allow cancer growth, cannot allow bacteria growth. Where we have good, oxygen, good circulation, good oxygenation, there's no disease. And number three key of a good health is alkalinization. So we have acidic foods, alkaline foods. It sounds complicated, it's not. God created the way he created is alkaline. It's processed in a machine, it's not from God. It gives you acid environment in your body. Diseases, Cancer cells, autoimmune, whatever you name it, it, reproduces in an acidic environment. Healing happens in a base, into an alkaline environment. There you go. <laughs> Those are the secrets. What do you add to your food? Fruits and vegetables. Everything that God created will add. Everything else will take and make you sick. Simple, right? Next one. <clears throat> Exercise. Remember that where we have a lot of blood circulation, a lot of oxygen it go, is going through? No disease can survive there? That's why we need exercise. I know it's painful. I can see your face. <laughs> Gardening counts, cleaning the house counts, leaving your car parked far and walk counts, taking stairs counts, everything that is to keep moving counts. The Israelites were living in Egypt, right? Their life there was different. You know how God got them out, out of there and healthy? Walking. They went through a a detox. They were walking, they were drinking water, the only food they had was manna. <laughs> they had sunshine, they had to sleep at the time that God put them to sleep. Because they had the colon, remember the, the fire at night? If they were out of that protection, what would happen to them? They would be bitten by scorpions and snakes and all kinds of nasty animals that were around there. So 
Can you see how the old Israel is parallel to your Israel? <laughs> we are getting out of Egypt and we are going to heaven. We are going to Canaan. Um, the exercise is part of it. If you can start two minutes walking, start two minutes walking. If you can start half an hour, start half an hour and just builds, builds up. What next? Five more minutes, 10 more minutes. And the day you don't do it, your body will say, hey, I, I, want, I want that blood circulating. I want that fast breathing. Um, it was proven by science that 45 minutes of exercise is very beneficial. Of that 45 minutes, 10 minutes of fast breathing and sweating, it's where happens healing. 10 minutes doesn't seem a lot, right? It is a lot, especially when you were doing planks <laughs> or burpees. Um, but you just build up. Don't try to do the 10 minutes at, at once. Build up. Uh, when Apostle says, start training for the marathon, he doesn't say to go run 100 miles at one day, right? He said, start slowly and build it up. Um, how long can we exercise? That goes up to you. We start little and add, add up. Warm up, it's really good to um, start our exercise with something that will have our blood circulating really fast. That's called warm up. And stretching, next one. Stretching is amazing. Have you noticed that animals, after they take a little nap, what they do? Do you want to stretch? You can stand up and stretch. <laughs> it will wake you up. So stretching, after you've done a good amount of exercise, you stretch, something amazing happens. Our arteries and veins, the tiny, tiny terminations of our arteries and veins, they get calcified. And blood cannot go through to carry oxygen all the way through. What will prevent that and reverse that is stretching. It's so thin and little that when you stretch, it breaks it, the calcification, and blood can go through. Isn't that amazing? So you know now why the babies, when you pick them from the crib, they go like, ugh. They stretch. Little kids, when you wake them up, they go, oh, they stretch. All the animals, they go throughout their day is stretching several times. And we should be doing. Yeah, stretching is really good. Very, very good for, uh, it, it helps us to be more flexible. And it helps us. Um, with our arteries and veins that really can have more, um, more blood circulating. Next. Why is so important fresh air and nature? Remember the oxygen that needs to be circulating? That's one of the keys of being healthy. Fresh air. We want good quality of oxygen in our blood. So here is perfect. You have such a clear, clean, pure air, and uh, the mountains are, are there. You can see everything is so beautiful. So you have the fresh air and the beauty. Every time you have the beauty around you and you say, oh, wow, thank you, Lord, for creating all this so beautiful, something happens when you say thank you. Part of healing happens when you say thank you. Remember the lepers? Just one came back to say thank you. I think he was the only one that was healed in all the aspects. He was healed emotionally, physically, and um, spiritually. The other ones, I, 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 I think they were healed too. But the only one that came to say thank you had a special blessing, a special way of healing. Um, breathing exercises, what we do here at church singing, it's one of the best. 
just breathe. You have to sing, you breathe. You have to sing, and that helps your um, lung capacity to expand. And we want as much as possible of our uh, capacity to expand. When a person uh, starts smoking, and um, it many, many years of smoke, that capacity is diminished. It's very tiny. And then they start having all kinds of respiratory problems. Even though the person did, let's say, 40 years of smoking, do you think God can heal that person and he still heal the lungs? Yes. It can, it can help. It might not be exactly like it was 40 years ago before he started smoking, but a lot of healing will happen. And a lot of expansion of the lungs will happen. Um, what, let's try to walk more bare feet. Um, we were created to be outside, right? In nature, gardening. And we just stay inside. Then it gets the winter, everything we touch, like metal, it shocks us. What is that? Static. That is static electricity. I'm not talking about weird energy and stuff, no. I'm, I'm talking about physics and, and electricity and things that you can see. You can see the, the, um, the shock coming out of you. And the only way that we can get all that out is barefooted. If it's too cold, <laughs> you can hug your pet and then let your pet go outside to discharge the static electricity. <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> Um, you can, uh, this is weird too, but you can hug a tree. It's, you're not crazy, tree hugger, no. It's, um, the trees have long roots. So the, the earth is the best way to conduct that aesthetic electricity. So you can hug a tree far away from your neighbors and uh, <laughs> that will take care of the, the shocking everything. Next one. <clears throat> sunshine. Why sunshine is so important? What the sunshine activates in us? Vitamin D. When we are sick, we have very low vitamin D. Patients with depression, vitamin D, very low. Cancer, low, almost zero. Um, when a woman is going through menopause, it's low. When um, we have osteoporosis, low. We need more sunshine. We need more sunlight. The best time to get that sunlight is at noon. Isn't that crazy? Is the sun that we were told to avoid. Yes, we, we need to avoid if it's for sunbathing and to work outside. It's true that we need to be very early in the morning, very late in the afternoon. But the best sun for your body to take vitamin D, to take the sunlight, to activate vitamin D production is five minutes at noon. Five minutes will not give you skin cancer. Will not give you blisters, sunburn, it, it's not. So what you have to do is pull your shirt. It needs to be bare skin. Pull your shirt, and you do your five minutes there every day. And your body will start to produce the hormone. And you will have five minutes of vitamin D equals 5,000 unities for free, no side effect. That's something that I really want you to notice. Till now, how much it costs you health, that God's way of healing? Nothing. 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 If you go to a clinic, how much do they charge you to starve you and give you lots of uh, juice and water and uh, exercise? And <laughs> Some clinics make you work for them <laughs> in the garden. And you have to pay a lot of money. Yeah. 
our SDH, yeah, our clinic. So only the people that have, I don't know, 20,000, some clinics in Mexico are 50, 60,000. God can only heal the rich? No. God's way is accessible for everybody. He doesn't charge. If you yep. If you ask for it, right? If you ask, <laughs> if you ask yes. If you want it and you are willing. So the surrender. Are you willing to surrender the cookies? <laughs> it's free. Everything that God gives us for our salvation, for our um, healing. It's amazing. Next one. Huh. <laughs> Stress control. I thought that was so funny. The, the kitty. Me trying to excel in my career. Maintain a social life. Drink enough water. Oh, eat, eat an apple a day, right? They forgot that word there. Exercise. Text everyone back. Stay sane. Survive and be happy. <laughs> Everything with a smile. <laughs> Can we do that on our own? When we ask God, can God do it in you? Yes. And you will do have a smile. You will have it. And we'll be sincere. If we try it on our own, ugh, it's a chore. What works for stress? Yeah, do everything else that we are learning. Sleep. Sleep. Um, drink water. Exercise, vitamin D, prayer, everything works. But sometimes a person can take the worst out of us in a way that nobody else can. <laughs> and usually it's somebody from our own house. <laughs> yeah. When I visit my brothers in Brazil, it was this urge of being right all the time that was like, if I don't say it and I have to prove that I'm right, I'm going to explode. <laughs> it's, it's something that it's, it's devil. <laughs> it's like, uh, they do not take the best out of us because they grew up with us. They know what bugs us and we know what bugs them. So it's a good time to practice, to be really calm and nice surrender. <laughs> So use your family to train your patients. <laughs> what works with the stress? The only thing that would help me to bite my tongue and move far, far away from my brothers <laughs> is this. Philippians 4, 4 through 13. That, that's it. Every time you have a thought of stress, every time you have a problem, and that is just there, and it's eating you, like no, uh, uh, the, the not, that just come and bite you and rebite you, and it stays there, and it's draining you out of your energy, and it's draining you of your emotional strength. It's just, you can't change your mind. It gets so obsessive thinking that we get angry just thinking about it. It's just, you know how it goes. It gets so big and frustrating. Sometimes we burst into tears or we throw things or we smash things just because we can't handle it. And it's something that we don't want to feel. We want to change the course, but we can't. This can. It starts with rejoice. Okay, Lord, I'm angry, but I need rejoice. Yeah, we were not born rejoicing. We were born crying and whining. Apostle Paul taught himself to rejoice. And, and he said two times, rejoice. I tell you again, rejoice. Rejoice. <laughs> 
Let your moderation, let your self-control be known into all men, and they will test you. It will be put to test your moderation, your self-control, how much in charge you are of your feelings, how much in charge you are of your, your thoughts and your reaction to things that are really annoying. You know, when you have little kids, they go like, Mom, he's looking at me. Tell him to stop looking at me. He's breathing on me. Ew, no. Oh, his things touch my things. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> so, is our moderation? We were little and we didn't have a lot of knowledge. People would take things from us. Would take it back, and with time, we learn better. So moderation, self-control, rejoice. It's something that we train ourselves to be. And we put ourselves over and over, and the Lord will put us over and over till we learn, because the Lord is at hand. And we need to be just like him. <laughs> be careful for nothing. Be stressed for everything. Is that what it says there? No, but every problem you have, bring in prayer and supplication. Look at that. With thanksgiving. Before you even see the result, you will say thank you for receiving it. That's amazing. That's called faith. Let your request be made known into God. Do you think God knows? Yeah, God knows. But he needs for you to say it. For you to ask. Because Satan has his eyes open. And he will go, oh, God is pushing that person to do something. Can God be pushy? No. So he, he will not push. He knows your troubles. He knows your problems. But you need to tell him. Because we have an accuser. And if the accuser keep on accusing you. To the extent that people around you will accuse you. And blame you for something. Your prayer will activate your lawyer. Ah, if you fight your, your wars alone, your lawyer cannot fight for you. When we try to solve our problems on our own, will not be solved. He is the one that we need to activate through the prayer, and he will say, okay, now you are letting me do this. So you will stay there, quiet, patient, praying, praising me, rejoicing, saying thank you, and I will fight for you. <laughs> and amazing things will happen. It happens. And I know you, it happened to you. When you let God fight for you, it's amazing was never God's plan for the Israelites to get bloody. Never. You remember how it was in the beginning? The, the way he wanted for the Israelites? He wanted them to take the ark. The Levites would go. They would go singing. And the people would go behind doing what? Walking, singing. Rejoicing, praising. And what would happen? One day it was like a, the, 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 the day turned into night. And uh, the whole army got killed. Who killed? God did. The other time were, um, were the bees, the very big bees. What's the name of the big bees? Bumblebees. 
that went and destroyed the whole army. Another time was um, Jonah and his, his, his men, and just the two of them could destroy a whole army? No, they were falling on their own. They were falling on, on uh, Joash. What did I say? Jonah, Jonah I'm sorry. It was Joash. Joash and, and his helper. Jonathan. Yes. The son of... <laughs> the, the names are different in English. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. This, the, the son of Saul, King Saul. Um, so many times. Oh, remember Elijah? They were all there surrounded and they were blinded. And then the Israelites were like, oh, can we kill them? They were blind. And they were, can you see how evil we can be when we try to do things on our own? Can we kill them? And Elijah said, do not touch a single hair of these people. We will give them food. <laughs> God's way is really impressive, really amazing. He wants you to activate the power of your lawyer. If you try to solve your problem, it's not going to happen. You're going to make a big mess. The good thing is that even if we make a big mess, God can transform that into a blessing and a learning experience. And we're never going to do that again. So when we bring our problems to God, he makes something amazing. The peace of God that we don't understand how it happens will keep our hearts and minds through Christ. When we give our trouble, he gives us peace and we can look at him. He can guide our eyes to look at him. And everything is falling apart, but your eyes are there to be transformed. <clears throat> Finally, whatever things you see that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, praise, you think of those things. Your mind starts to drift away, you bring it back. It goes away, you bring it back. And if it reminds you of something that you need to say, I'm sorry, forgive me, you do it. If you don't want to do it, you ask God to help you to do it, and he will help you to do it. it it's painful to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's healthy because it has a healing yes. into it. Those things which are both learned and received and heard and seen, practice. Do it. Whatever you are learning, do it. And the God of peace shall be with you. When you get dismayed and you think you don't have any more strength, you read verse 13 that says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And then we start all over. Next one. That pill is the only one that works for stress. You have problem, you bring it to God. If you have problem with your thoughts, you take that pill every two hours and you think about it and pray. And you say, okay, Lord, what miracle are you going to do today? So you see your problems in a different way. You see a problem, God sees an opportunity of doing something amazing for you. So next step is in the beginning, God told us, I give you every seed bearing plant on the, first of the, whole, on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be your food. That was the beginning of the Bible. At the end of the Bible, the same verse is there, and it adds and will be for the healing of the nations. So, did God change our original diet? He said, because of our hearts, he adapted to it. 
So man used to live almost a thousand years after a couple of things were introduced, after sin was introduced, it reduced to the 10%. What else do we bring to church that is 10%? Our life shortened enough to be tithe. So the whole time we live now, it's tithe, paying tithe. Isn't that interesting? Huh. Our time, our eating, our sleeping. It's not that the 10% anymore of the 10% that we have. Our living right now, at this time of the world, has to be to God. That's it has a big meaning to us because if we didn't start doing it yet, the transformations that God wants for us to do, we need to keep asking, say, Lord, we are running out of time. I need to be like Jesus or I'm not going to make it. Please help me. And then when you have all the other steps to be healthy, you have the next one, the one that we don't like much. Next one is the eating healthy, which if we eat the way God told us to eat, if we have our garden, that will be almost free of cost for us, right? If we go to the grocery store to shop, eating like this will be a lot cheaper. It gets really expensive when we put the boxes. And um, when we go through that changing, when we are transforming from, you know, the, the bacon to the veggie bacon, you know, sometimes we still need to see that in our plate, but God slowly goes transforming us because then we will read the ingredients and we say, okay, I'm not a baby anymore. I need to eat something else <laughs> to the point where we will be happy eating an apple. Sister White's words, she said, we need to be in total control of our stomach to not be our God, that we will be happy by trading a whole meal with an apple. Are you there yet? I'm not. <laughs> but it's just food. And it's such a big deal for us because it's a form of pleasure. It's a form of gathering. It's a form of joy. We start crying, our mom, give us food. <laughs> Be happy, eat. <laughs> and we do, yes. Tina said that people relate happiness with the mouth, with, with eating. And just for you to think, comfort food, it's everything that God told us not to eat, right? Look at Satan's tricks. Who is our comforter? The Holy Spirit. And Satan put the food to be comfort. Huh? Can we go about our day eating a lot of comfort food? <laughs> we have three meals a day. The three times what goes inside of us, inside of the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's what we choose for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The way God wants us to eat is fruits, vegetables, greens, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. That's the original way. That's what we have in target. We say, Lord, I like a lot of things that are not there, but 
I will add more of these things to my plate. And please help me not to like the other things. When I first got here in 2007, that's embarrassing. I used to love Krispy Kreme. Do you have Krispy Kreme here? I think it's a southern thing. It's a, it's a donut store. That is so pretty. It's like a, it's like a TV for, for hungry people. <laughs> So you can see the donuts being made and then they go through the machine and they have a bath in the oil and then they come out and they put the icing and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, this is amazing and so expensive in Brazil. Like McDonald's in Brazil is a fancy restaurant. Only rich people can eat there. <laughs> Outback, oh wow, Outback is like the really, really rich people eat there. <sighs> so I was like, oh, and it's so cheap, yay. But I started learning and I said, oh, you know, I need, I need to say bye to my donuts. I'm so sad. And I was reading the news and it says, today is Donuts Day in Richmond. You can go to any Krispy Kreme and get your donut for free. And I said, oh, I can't miss that. <laughs> so I stopped there to get my donut and uh, my conscience started to be hurting. And I said, ah, can, you, can you give me the donuts without the sugar? <laughs> and the girl looked at me and she's like, what? I said, yeah, I'm trying to stop eating sugar. And she said, sure. And she gave me that. I bit into it. It's horrible. It's nasty. The, 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 the fat makes your tongue it stick to the roof of your mouth. It's awful. It's bitter. It's, it's, it's just, you, you can't even keep on chewing. It, it's, it's awful. Ah. And I, 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 I was embarrassed, but I told my husband, I said, what's wrong with the, the oil that's frying here? And he started laughing. And he said, you know, he's a builder. He used to build uh, big restaurants across the U.S. And he said, you know, restaurants, especially fast foods, they built a box in the outside that all that fat is accumulate in a box outside. And then a truck will come and collect that fat to do motor oil. Every three months, they change the oil. <sighs> That's why it tasted nasty. That have been burnt, and to take this, the, the taste of burnt oil, because it turns into a different color when you burn the oil, they put chemicals to get a clear and do you think they throw it away? No, for three months it stayed there. So the things of God, he gives you a special way of start liking it. The things that have been manipulated, processed, when you try it by its own, it tastes awful. It has no flavor it, it ha or it, it's bitter. And it is just, uh, they say in the South that um, if something tastes bad, or you put a lot of sugar and deep fry, or you put a lot of butter, <laughs> and it will taste good. So if we need to do that to our food, uh, we need to start adding more of the fruits and more of the vegetables. And to do that, you're going to pray and the Lord will hear you and help you. I know it's hard, it takes work, but the Lord is bothering you. I, I know he is, he bothered me and I had to change. Once I changed, little steps, baby steps, 
It took me long years, long, long years. But once you start changing, you can enjoy the benefits of it. Once I start changing, I didn't have to spend all night with my kids up with earache, throat ache. I could have the benefits of it. And what he wants to give to you is so big that we can't understand. We will spend eternity trying to understand what he wants to give to you. Is it worth it to trade for the cookies that we want to stay tied to it? Tied to sickness, and, and we end up being in a trap right. where that's how we start vice. Yes. Yes. And uh, everything that Satan tried to trap us, make us sick, and we try to get out of it. And we can't. God can, but we really need to ask him and, and, and beg him, and he will do it for you.